Given a linear programming problem, this example will use the method of corners to find the corner points of the objective function, evaluate those corner points, and determine which yields the optimum solution. So our objective function is to minimize c equals 4x plus 3y subject to the following constraints. So the way these first two constraints are written, we first need to solve them for y or put them into slope-intercept form. So starting off with 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 14, we simply subtract 2x from both sides and we call this y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 14. The second equation or excuse me, inequality, x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 16. We have to subtract x from both sides and divide each piece by 2 to find that y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 8. And then the other two constraints that we have written here are non-negativity constraints that generally accompany every linear programming problem. So I'm going to have to determine how to make my graph. I know I need a y-intercept of 14, so given the size of this graph, I'm going to use increments of 1. So here's the point 0, 14 which is the y-intercept of the first equation. And I'm actually going to do these in different colors. Let me rewrite this one in red so you can distinguish the difference in the graphed inequalities. And the second one I'm going to do in blue. So this first one I would begin graphing the y-intercept of 0, 14 as I did. And from there the slope is negative 2, so I can come down 2 and write 1 and follow that pattern to make sure that when I line up my straight edge I get a nice accurate line. And I said I would be doing this first one in red. So here's the line representing the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 14. However, I still need to determine which side of that line to shade. So if I use a test point of 0, 0, I like to go back to the original inequality, especially when it's written in general form like this, because when I plug in my test point, it generally makes an entire side of the inequality simplify to 0. So the statement I get here is 0 is greater than or equal to 14, which is a false statement. So points below the line, which 0, 0 is below the line, give us a false statement. And because of the textbook we're using, we are crossing out or shading the false side. If you happen to be using a different textbook, you might shade the true side, in which case this would be the true side. Now when we move on to the second inequality, y is greater than or equal to negative one-half x plus eight, I'm going to start with the y-intercept, which is the point zero eight, and from there I'm going to move down one and write two because my slope is negative one-half. Oh, that's convenient. Look at that. That point ended up on the other line. Okay, so I can line up my straight edge. Oh, apparently I made a mistake there. Line up my straight edge to connect the dots. And this line here represents the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative one-half x plus eight. Once again, we need to plug in a test point. I like 0, 0. And I plug it into the original inequality in general form. So 0 plus 2 times 0 is greater than or equal to 16. 
0 greater than or equal to 16 is false once again. So points beneath the line and the side that 0, 0 is on give me a false statement. Once again, I'm going to cross out or shade the false side. So the last two inequalities I have to graph are x and y are greater than or equal to 0. I kind of already knew that when I put this piece of graph paper on here. That would have crossed out all of quadrant 2, 3, and 4. So I didn't even include those in the graph. But we know that our feasible set S is restricted to the first quadrant. And we need to identify the corner points that define the feasible set S. One, two, three of them. And then to the right here, the line Y is greater than or equal to zero. We'll just continue on. So I know this first one here, let's call that A, the middle one B, and the rightmost one C. So I know that A is the point 0, 14, Point B, since I have such nice graph paper here, I can just count it out. That's one, two, three, four to the right, and then up one, two, three, four, five, six. So B is four, six. And finally, C, we can count this one as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that's the point. 16, 0. Now, as we saw in previous examples, we plug in the x and y coordinates of the corner points into the objective function to find which optimizes the solution. So replacing x and y with 0 and 14, we have 4 times 0 plus 3 times 14. That should give me 42. And then the second point, we replace x with 4 and y with 6. So that's 4 times 4 plus 3 times 6. That's 16 plus 18 gives us 32, 34, excuse me. And finally, the third corner point has an x value of 16 and a y value of 0. So we have 4 times 16 plus 3 times 0, which gives us 64. Now the objective function here is to minimize c equal to 4x plus 3y. So when we, when we look at the values obtained from plugging in the corner points, we could see that 34 is a minimum. So when we write the solution, we might say that the minimum <laughs> I can't even spell. The minimum C is equal to 34 when X equals to 4 and Y equals 6.